Welcome public inventors. Uh, in my last video I demonstrated the turret joint but I didn't really have anything put together. I didn't have the robot constructed. Here you see the first robot which I've constructed. I call it the Glussbot number one because it is uh, made from the material that I call Gluss which is a series of linear actuators connected in triangles based on the ideas of Buckminster Fuller. Uh, let me just get it started so you can see it. Uh, it's very slow because the Fregelli um, actuators are slow but powerful based on the way that they're geared. And what I'm doing now is attempting to make the robot move through its extreme points. As you can see, the base here has got carbon fiber tubes. The wooden base is just for show. It's not actually necessary. Um, and I'm using only three actuators. Uh, Eventually, I'd like to put hundreds of actuators together to build a, a large robot that's capable of moving. The purpose of what I'm doing here is to demonstrate the joints here and here, as you can see. So this is composed of four turret joints, and uh, it demonstrates a certain amount of success with those joints, which is the, the case that the joints move, so I would claim they are mathematically correct. As you change the angle, the rotors, which have a spherical disc held against a ball, um, change their position relative to the ball and change their angle. So that in principle, they are always pointed at the center of the ball, and then that way, any force directed against them, for example, I can direct a force down this way, um, will be well uh, supported and will not represent any undue torque in the system. However, that is not to say that the mechanical properties of the joint are wonderful. Uh, in fact, I've had some problems with my rotor pegs breaking. I did a burn-in period of about 20 minutes and this rotor peg over here broke. Um, part of the reason, I don't know if you can see on camera, is because this is quite rough. I printed these um, parts using a 3D printer on the fast setting, so there are a lot of striations. I have since sanded them um, in an attempt to make things better. It's also the case that the Fergelli actuator is a little difficult to hook up to, so I have a fairly weak part connected to it. I could, of course, change that by using a more complicated mounting system, but, I, but then I would have to have more than one part uh, attached to each end of the linear actuator, and I haven't wanted to do that yet. Um, as you can see in this demonstration, the joint um, is not perfectly smooth. It's a little frictiony. When it gets to certain positions, it kind of sticks, and then it pops into a new position. They just did it uh, there. So it's working, but um, from a mechanical engineering point of view, I don't know even how to characterize um, whether it's a good joint from like a fictional bear, a frictional bearing point of view. Um, I think it's a good invention from a mathematical point of view, but of course we'll have to see. Of course, it's also simply made out of plastic. If these uh, parts were made out of steel or brass or were lubricated in some way, which they are not right now, it's possible that it, the whole system would work uh, more smoothly. So uh, what I am doing now is uh, with this program, moving it through its extreme positions in the uh, space of the length of the linear actuators. Uh, soon I will um, make it move in the Cartesian space so that we could program it to move in a helix or to move in a circle like this or, or so forth within the limits imposed by the geometry of the system. Uh, there's a lot more to say about that. Uh, I'll, I'll be talking about it more in other videos. Thank you very much. Um, Hope you enjoy this first glimpse at the Glusspot number one, as humble as it is. Thank you.